Hello there, I'm Nafis Salatic and this is Across the Balkans. Today on the show, we look at China's growing influence in the region. At the turn of the century, many countries in southeastern Europe often had two options when it came to outside investment, the European Union or Russia. But over the past decade, a new player stepped in. China has emerged as one of the biggest investors in the Western Balkans. A flood of cheap loans have built everything from highways, bridges to tunnels. But many of those investments have come with consequences, as allegations of corruption, mismanagement, management and defaults shrouded promises of jobs and economic growth. Let's take a closer look at some of those numbers. According to a recent report, the region hosts 136 Chinese-linked projects worth nearly $35 billion. One of China's biggest construction jobs in the EU is the two-and-a-half-kilometer-long Pelješac Bridge in Croatia. It's being built by a Chinese consortium that will connect Croatia's mainland to its southernmost region and will cost nearly half a billion dollars. It is expected to open to the public next month. Over in Serbia, the Pupin, or Chinese bridge as it's locally known, crosses the Danube River in Belgrade. Completed in 2014, the 1,500-meter-long bridge cost around $220 million and was China's first big infrastructure investment in Europe. But not all Chinese-funded projects have gone smoothly. In Montenegro, for example, a Chinese-built highway financed with a billion-dollar loan hit a roadblock. Montenegro, whose total GDP was just slightly over $5 billion, struggled to repay the debt. Part of a longer 445-kilometer-long highway, it was meant to connect Belgrade with the Adriatic port of Bar in Montenegro. Although much of China's recent investments have centered around highways and bridges, its foray into Europe started at sea. Shortly after the financial crisis of 2008, China chose Greece to be its main gateway to Europe. It would also become part of the Belt and Road Initiative, a trillion-dollar infrastructure project that will recreate the ancient Silk Road. A cornerstone of that was China's acquisition of the port of Piraeus near Athens. While initial enthusiasm towards China has since changed, many people in Greece still welcome their investment. But the decision might not be entirely up to them. Feidul Keri went to Greece's biggest port, Piraeus, to explore Chinese companies operating there. As China sought to expand its global reach in the early 2000s, it chose Greece as its getaway to Europe. Greece's biggest port, Piraeus, has since grown into a major hub for goods destined for Europe, especially after 2000, when China's state-owned Costco took over its container operations and upgraded its infrastructure. In 2021, the port of Piraeus recorded its most profitable year, with annual turnover hitting nearly $170 million. Tasos Babakidis is the commercial manager of PCT, Costco's subsidiary that manages the container terminal. The Piraeus is because it is a physical limani. Είναι ένα λιμάνι το οποίο είναι, ενώνει τρεις υπήρους, Ασία, Ευρώπη και Αφρική. Έχει μια προσ, προσβασιμότητα για τα φορτία που προορίζονται προς τη Μαύρη Θάλασσα που δεν έχει άλλο λιμάνι. Έχει τη μικρότερη δυνατή deviation, τη, τη μικρότερη δυνατή απόκληση στο ρου από Σουέζ μέχρι το Γιβραντάρ. Δεν χρειάζεται κανείς με ένα πλοίο να κάψει πάρα πολύ πετρέλαιο ε, για να προσεγγίσει το λιμάνι του Πειραιά. Ε, επίσης είμαστε το πρώτο λι, ευρωπαϊκό λιμάνι που έχει ε, διασύνδεση οδική και συνοδομική με, το, με τα δίκτυα της Ευρώπης. 
So Greece has now become an important step of the new Silk Route, the Belt and Road Initiative, which is a global infrastructure project the Chinese government adopted in 2013 to invest in nearly 70 countries and international organizations. Due to the Chinese investments, the number of ships arriving at the port has increased more than fivefold, and perhaps more importantly, the size of ships that can access the port has doubled. Εκτιμώμε ότι η επένδυση εδώ θεωρείται επιτυχημένη. Ε, στα τελευταία 12 χρόνια από τότε που ξεκίνησε η ΣΕΠΑ ΑΕ, με τη μεγάλη βοήθεια που είχαμε από την μητρική εταιρεία, ε, μπόρεσε να επενδύσει πάρα πολύ σημαντικά κεφάλαια στην ανάπτυξη του σταθμού εμπορευματοκιβωτίων Πειραιά. Ε, να φανταστείτε ότι Όταν ε, το 2010 υπήρχε μία διακίνηση της τάξης των 900.000 κοντέινερ, το 2021 ε, έχουμε ξεπεράσει τα 5 εκατομμύρια. Η αύξηση είναι ε, τεράστια. Under the deal between China and Greece, Costco had to make some investments to make the port more competitive. And while the company has held its own end of the bargain, it hasn't been without resistance. Last October, China's top maritime freight company raised its stake in Greece's largest port to 67%, tightening control over a vital link with Europe. But just a few months later, Greece's Supreme Court blocked a plan to expand the passenger port at Piraeus, saying an environmental assessment was not carried out as required by Greek and EU law. Locals who took Costco to court due to environmental concerns celebrated the decision, but the company appeared determined to go through with its plans as it released a statement saying the company is committed to implementing its major investment plan in the country, taking into account any possible adjustments deemed necessary in accordance with the decisions of the competent administrative and judicial authorities and the convention concession with the Greek state. As a stable, reliable and long-term investor in the country, PPA cooperates closely with the Greek authorities for the best result always in full implementation of all of the decisions. Costco's plans include expanding the port in the south, a new passenger terminal, four new hotels, a five-story parking lot and 80 new warehouses. These additions will definitely bring in more money, but many people living in Piraeus are worried about the costs to their city's scenic beauty. Yorgos Floras is a financial consultant and the managing partner in Belt and Road Associates, a Greek company that facilitates Chinese investments. He says investments from Beijing have slowed down since 2015, not just because of the situation in Greece. We have a completely closed economy, a friendly society for the Chinese, but with a huge antagonism που δυσκολεύει πάρα πολύ τους Κινέζους. Και αυτός ο τεράστιος ανταγωνισμός συνδυάζεται και με τα ενδογενή προβλήματα των Κινέζικων εταιριών. Γιατί εδώ μια επένδυση, ειδικά στον ιδιωτικό τομέα, είναι μια καλή επένδυση, είναι περιζήτητη. Οι Κινέζοι γνωρίζουμε ότι οι μεγάλες εταιρείες που επενδύουν στο εξωτερικό είναι κατά βάση κρατικές εταιρείες. Άρα υπάρχει μια γραφειοκρατία που την γνωρίζουμε και την βλέπουμε και εμείς στην Ελλάδα, στις δικές μας δημόσιες εταιρείες και επιχειρήσεις. Ο τρίτος παράγοντας που είναι πάρα πολύ σημαντικός για την ελληνική πραγματικότητα είναι αυτό που λέμε ο αμερικάνικος παράγοντας, δηλαδή η επιρροή των Ηνωμένων Πολιτειών ως προς τις επενδύσεις των κινέζικων εταιριών. Η Ελλάδα παραδοσιακά είναι μια χώρα που έχει άριστες σχέσεις με τις Ηνωμένες Πολιτείες της Αμερικής για πολλούς και διαφόρους λόγους. Αυτό είναι μια πραγματικότητα. Οι ΗΠΑ, οι Ηνωμένες Πολιτείες από την πλευρά τους ασκούν σημαντικές πιέσεις σε όλες τις κυβερνήσεις, σε όλο τον κόσμο, ώστε να εμποδίσουν όσο μπορούν τις κινέζικες επενδύσεις. Greece's economy is growing and while it no longer sees China as a savior, it still seems open to Chinese investments. Analysts say the Chinese are also quite keen in investing in Greece, especially in renewable energy, which is likely to become one of the fastest growing sectors in Europe. But China's long-term future here may all be decided by an unknown factor, 
how the European Union responds to Beijing's seemingly pro-Russian stance in the Ukraine conflict. Pedro Gary, TRT World, Athens. My guest is George Tozokopoulos. He's a strategic affairs analyst and lecturer at the European Institute of Nice. He is in Rome at the moment and he joins us from there. Uh, hello, George, and thank you for helping us understand the rising China's influence um, in the region. I do want to start with uh, particularly China-Greece uh, relations. Uh, how have their relations changed since 2009 uh, when Chinese companies started operating uh, at the port of Piraeus. Thank you for having me. It's my great pleasure to be with you. The Sino-Greek relationship has evolved harmoniously since 2009, and the main reason, as you correctly suggested, is the investment of a Chinese company, Costco Shipping, in the Piraeus port. As a result of this investment, the Piraeus port has been transformed into one of the biggest ports in the Mediterranean, and Greece is playing a critical role for rolling out the Belt and Road Initiative. So within this context, Sino-Greek relations are progressing smoothly, and the Piraeus port is the flagship pro project in China's Belt and Road Initiative. And how significant is the port of Piraeus for the China's Belt and Road Initiative that you've mentioned? Has it become Beijing's gateway into Europe? This is a great question, and my answer is yes. And the main reason is that Greece is a member state of both the European Union and NATO. And if we are looking at the map, we can understand the significance of the Piraeus port, because from Piraeus, commodities which are coming from Asia can reach Greece, from Greece, southeastern Europe, and then other countries of central and eastern Europe. And taking into account also that Greece is part of the 16 plus 1 initiative, the role of the country in that regard in boosting trade becomes more and more significant. And this is also the case, obviously, for China's economic policy in Europe. Since uh, the COVID pandemic and now the conflict in Ukraine, attitudes towards Beijing are changing globally, not just uh, in our region. How will this new climate affect China's investment in Greece, particularly going forward? Yes, this is a very important uh, question. And since 2017-18, the European Union has started to revisit its relationship with Beijing. And in the last years also, there is a new screening mechanism which is in place, meaning that member states of the European Union need to consult with the European Commission before granting uh, contracts to foreign countries. However, Chinese investments in Greece have been aligned with the European framework. And in that regard, although the environment currently is different from what it used to be, the Chinese investments in Greece are completely aligned with the European policy uh, level and with the European uh, policy framework, which is important for all EU member states. So yes, we are observing an adjustment, but at the same time, we need to bear in mind that everything has been in line with what the European Commission suggests. And given the tensions, um, are we looking in a, into a greater cooperation era between China and Russia? Um, and how do you think this will play out, their relationship in the future and their cooperation with the EU? Well, the relationship between China and Russia is uh, very good, is harmonious, but this does not mean that the two are building an alliance. What is happening is that American policies in the previous years practically have led Russia and China to work together, although the two are not agreeing on everything. For example, China is not directly taking the side of uh, Russia in the case of the Ukraine crisis, while Russia is not directly taking the side of China in the case of the Taiwan uh, Strait situation. So within this context, we are observing a different world order. Obviously, the two countries, China and Russia, are working together. This is certainly a warning signal to the European Union. But at the same time, obviously, China is very important for Europe 
strategically speaking, and also from the perspective of China's economic presence in Europe and from the lens of the interest of European companies to invest in China. So the two sides are having very difficult talks, but at the same time, I believe that we need to see at the glass as half full rather than as half empty. What makes China such an attractive economic partner to countries in the Western Balkans? Uh, is, is it their lack of access to EU capital markets, uh, lack of trust in the EU? As, as we know, for several countries, the EU accession talks have been delayed several times. So what makes uh, China uh, in, in this context like a plan B in some way economically? Well, it depends on the European country. There are member states of the European Union which are aligning their policies with the uh, uh, suggestions of the European Commission. There are also European countries, like in the Balkans, which are not members of the European Union. They are more free in negotiating deals with China. China is an important investor in Europe, but it's not the most important investor. So European countries themselves and also the United States tend to invest more than China. However, the role of China is critical because, as you nicely pointed out, especially in difficult times and when non-Western companies are interested in investing, then Chinese companies are very much interested in playing a role in that regard. We have observed that in the Balkans. We have also observed that in Greece. So what is happening is that in a portfolio of investments from different countries, China is an important investor. Not the most important, but certainly an investor which needs to be taken into account. Late last year, the EU launched uh, a $340 billion plan to counteract uh, China's growing influence in Europe and other regions. You're nodding your head. Um, what impact will that have on future investment projects uh, in the region? You refer nicely to the Global Gateway Program, which has been suggested by the European Commission. Practically, this is part of the EU-Asia connectivity strategy, which means that theoretically the European Union is interested in working together with China, in other words, in linking together the Global Gateway with the Belt and Road Initiative. But obviously, the two projects are competitive. The question is up to what extent the two sides can join forces, especially in continents like Africa, or the competition itself can lead to rivalry. I believe that it is still possible for the two sides to work together, especially in helping poor countries to meet UN Sustainable Development Goals. Is this economic competition uh, between the EU and China and the US uh, a good thing for the region like the Balkans? I mean, more choices could mean lower prices and more investment, uh, but there are risks as well, right? Well, the competition itself can be a good thing indeed, especially when countries in need want to uh, attract foreign investments. The problem, obviously, is the fact that the competition is not only an economic one, it's at first a strategic competition taking into account the new world order. And in particular, the rivalry between the United States and China is the main characteristic of the new world order. So it depends if we are seeing developments from an economic perspective or from a geopolitical perspective. From an economic perspective, there are areas of cooperation. From a geopolitical perspective, the situation is much more tense and obviously deteriorated by the Ukraine crisis and the ongoing war. At the beginning of our program, we have listed some of the most significant projects that China is working on at the moment uh, in the Balkans. In your opinion, uh, what is the most significant one uh, that we are looking at at the moment? In my opinion, what matters at first, at first is the interconnectivity policy of China rather than a specific uh, investment. And I'm saying this because China, with the Belt and Road Initiative, is fostering what I call an organic connectivity between several parts of the world. So it is this organic connectivity which is making China a critical player for world economics and trade. So the more China invests, the better it is for it to roll out the Belt and Road Initiative. So once again, I strongly believe that it's very important to see how the different investments can be linked to each other, because this is the main philosophy of the Belt and Road Initiative. And in that regard, the Balkans, and Greece in particular, are critical. But if we only focus on a specific investments, we cannot understand the wisdom of the Chinese initiative, and the main reason why the United States has been very, very skeptical towards China in recent years. 
And how is China engaging with the Balkan states? Uh, are they focusing on state or non-state level companies? What's their strategy? How, the, how are they approaching to the countries in the region? Well, most Balkan countries, which are not members of the European Union, have kind of a freedom in doing business with China or in attracting uh, Chinese investments. And what is happening is that there are Chinese uh, foreign, Chinese state-owned enterprises and private enterprises which are interested in getting contracts in these countries. And what China is saying is that several type of investments which are ongoing, they can produce win-win results in the sense that Chinese companies are interested in investments on the one hand. And on the other hand, poorer countries are very much interested in seeing the living conditions of uh, local citizens get improved. So up to what extent this balance can be sustainable in the long term is a question to be answered in the future. But this is how China works. And this is why also Balkan countries are very much interested in continuing and expanding their cooperation with China. Which, of course, angers Brussels. And other than providing money, how do you think the EU plans to compete with the growing Chinese influence in the region moving forward? Well, uh, in recent years, the European Union has identified China in three ways, uh, as a partner, as, a as an economic competitor, as well as a strategic uh, rival. So there are three categorizations. And what the European Union is trying to do is, on the one hand, to keep channels of communication open with China, and on the other hand, to protect its values, especially in the new world order. As far as the Balkans is concerned, the European Union has two specific policies. The first is to see up to what extent more, more investments from EU countries can take place in the Balkans. And on the other hand, the second proposal is possibly for Balkan countries to become members of the European Union rather sooner than later. This is a difficult process, a complicated process, but it is part of, of, of Brussels, especially taking into account the influence not only of, of China, but also of Russia. And uh, meanwhile, uh, Biden administration often says how the Balkans is one of their main strategic uh, goals. Um, obviously, the rising uh, competition between the U.S. and China that we are seeing at the moment. How is the U.S. planning to uh, compete with China in the Balkans? Well, many countries in the Balkans obviously are members of NATO, meaning that uh, the United States are having the upper hand in terms of their strategic and geopolitical orientation. What is particularly complicated, however, is the fact that uh, Chinese investments are contributing to economic prosperity in specific Balkan countries. And this is particularly difficult for the United States to cope with. That's why in recent months in particular, the Biden administration has also proposed some investments packages in order to create what can be called as a counterbalance to the Belt and Road Initiative. We will see how this will evolve in practice, because as we know, the American economy works with completely different standards from the Chinese one, but it will be a very interesting uh, issue to be examined in the future. George, thank you so much for being our guest on Across the Balkans. I leave, I'll leave you now to your lectures over there in Rome. Thank you for finding time for this uh, in-depth analysis for us. Thank you for having me. Thank you. That's it for this week. Thanks for watching this episode of Across the Balkans. See you next time. And from me and the whole team here in Istanbul, bye-bye for now. Thank <laughs> you.